The fish will use that as stop signs along the way to feed up before the spawn, feeding on crawfish, feeding on shad, feeding on herring. Docks are a great place to start because Again, those fish are moving, and most of the time, guys, if you fish enough docks, you're gonna find some fish. We're gonna look for humps, we're gonna look for points, we're gonna look for What's going on, guys? Welcome to Lake Lanier. Today, we are gonna go in depth on where the spotted bass go from their winter patterns, locations, all the way to where they are going for the spring spawn. You guys aren't gonna wanna miss this. I'm gonna go in detail on everything. Hopefully it's as clear as possible. But again, we're going to be discussing where do spotted bass go in the springtime. I'm gonna go into details like when they move, where they move, what type of structures they set up on, what type of bottom they're going to set up on, what areas to fish, how weather and temperature, water temperature conditions affect that pre-spawn move. We're gonna go into all of these details to help you master the spotted bass pre-spawn transition. With all that said, we are looking at a map here of Lake Lanier. Many of y'all know Lake Lanier is my home lake. It is the number one spotted bass lake in the entire country in my opinion. That's a debate for another video, but go ahead and drop in the comments down below what your favorite spotted bass lake is. But again, we are out, we are here looking at a topographical map. In my opinion, that is the best way that I'm going to be able to communicate and teach you guys about where these spotted bass are moving from and going to. I've been fishing Lanier for over 15 years at this point. And one thing that I have learned is that you need to throw everything you think you know about the spawn out the window, especially when it comes to spotted bass. Spotted bass and largemouth are very different when it comes to the spawn, and some will do similar things, but most people have in their minds and what they've been taught is about the traditional largemouth spawn. And spots just hands down do not follow those similar patterns all the time, which is why they can be extremely challenging, extremely frustrating, to pattern during the pre-spawn. That's why you can have a great day one day and go out and struggle the next. You need to be able to willing, be able and willing to adapt and change in location, in lure choice, based on the conditions, a number of variables that again, we'll talk about here, but just make it, I call it, educated guest junk fishing. It's really not a guess because there is a pattern to it and hopefully I'm gonna communicate it in this video but it just seems so random sometimes and there's so many different variables at play and so many different options in how you can fish. So it's a ton of fun if you know those options and let's jump into it now. To start off, let's begin at where spotted bass are for the winter. Let's pretend it's still winter. I'm sure there's still some fish in winter patterns, I guarantee it, but they've definitely already begun the move. Little, uh, little tip there, especially if you're on Lake Lanier but those fish are in their wintertime patterns and where do spotted bass normally live in the winter? Most of them are going to live in 90% of the time or next to deep water. Not to say there's not fish gonna pull up shallow or, or live shallow year round and not to say those deep fish don't come up shallow every once in a while to feed. That's not, that, that is true, that's 100% true, but most of the time, especially during the daytime, those fish are going to be out in deeper water. Spotted bass love the deeper water in the winter. If you guys want to watch a more in-depth video on winter patterns, I recently made a video and I'll post it right here about where spotted bass, specifically on Lake Lanier, hang out during the winter and how you can catch them and all that. So those details will be in that video there. But I'll give you a quick recap really quickly just to start us off here. Those fish love deep water and they're gonna be in the ditches. And these ditches on this map are gonna be in blue and green. That's gonna be our deeper water. Yellow and red is going to be shallower water. So these ditches, as you guys can see at the bottom of the screen here, there's a ditch, there's a ditch there, there's a ditch. This is a larger ditch that runs all the way back here. Here's another ditch. Here's some ditches coming off of the main lake. Okay, so that's where these spotted bass are going to live dur during the winter and 
during the spawn, they're going to move to where they are going to spawn. And I use that very generic statement or blanket term because they are not going to all push to the back of these pockets like largemouth would. Some of them are going to spawn on humps. Some are going to spawn on points. Some are gonna spawn under docks. Some are going to spawn in brush piles. Some are going to spawn on do nothing make, on do nothing banks with pea gravel. They will spawn just about anywhere and at any depth. I've seen spots, personally, I believe that they were spawning in 25 feet of water. I believe that, no questions asked. I really do think that those fish are spawning that deep out there. So that's what I say when you gotta throw everything you think you know out the window because most of the time you hear with largemouth, you know, it's within visible sight. You know, it's less than six feet of water. And with spots, that most of the time is not the truth, in my opinion. I don't see many spots that shallow spawning. So those fish are going to move like I just listed in all of those areas. What that means is that you're going to have to check all those areas when fishing. So let's take a look here. We have our main river channel out here. Let's pretend a lot of the you know, main population of spotted bass in the winter are going to be in this deeper water. We'll say here, this is Chattahoochee Bay. If you guys are curious, you guys can obviously see it all over my screen. They're gonna be in deeper water. These fish, let's start off by just listing some of these, are going to be moving, again, shallower. Shallower is relative. If these fish were in, you know, 60 feet in the winter, they, move, they may move up to, you know, 15 to 20 feet for the spawn, maybe not all the way to the back. However, they're still going to use those ditches and river channels as highways to move for the spawn. And that's important because we're going to look for those key features that I just men mentioned before. We're gonna look for humps, we're gonna look for points, we're gonna look for docks, and then eventually pockets, because some of them will be in pockets. But they're gonna move, let's take a look here. Here's a perfectly defined creek channel and what they're going to do is they want to get to, again, a spawning pocket or a hump out here, maybe a road bed, a saddle, anything like that. So they're gonna use this river channel as a highway and they're going to stop at any point or hump or structure along the way in that pre-spawn staging process. So what I like to do is again, let's pretend our winter fish are out here in deeper water and they wanna move back here. Early in the pre-spawn, I'm gonna start checking this hump right here since it's at the mouth. I'm gonna look at this hump over here, maybe this point that intersects this ditch right here. And what I'm looking for is brush piles, hard spots, anything like that where the fish will use that as stop signs along the way to feed up before the spawn. Again, that's pre, it's pre-spawn. So if you look at this, it's very well defined. What I would do is look for any point and hump that's less than, tw again, 25 feet of water and start hitting those. Looking for fish, fishing for fish, and just see what's there because you will eventually run into spotted bass on one of these locations that I mentioned. So I'll walk you through my mindset. Start at the mouth, check a hump, check this hump, check this point, and I'm just gonna keep working my way towards the back. Here's a hump here, here's a point. And again, look for brush piles, look for timber, look for docks, anything. So. As we move further back in this creek channel, I'm gonna start looking again for secondary points. There's a secondary point there. Here's a secondary point here, secondary point there. Look for these fish to be staging on those, again, humps and secondary points. Now, another thing you can look for, as I mentioned, docks. I like deeper docks this time of year and will eventually transition into shallower docks as we get further into the spawn. But 
if there's docks along these creek channels, again, in 25 to 30 feet of water, that's where I've been catching some. Uh, just a little, a little helpful tip there pretty recently. But these fish will use those docks as well in their process towards, again, shallower water. So I would check the deeper side of these creek bends Anywhere where you have closer contour lines together, that means it's a harder drop and again, deeper water. So I would check if there are any docks here. I would check if there's any docks here. If we jump over to another one, I would look if there's any docks here. Again, anywhere right there, anywhere where that creek channel runs right up next to the, to the docks or to the shoreline. That's what I'm looking for. As again, those spotted bass will use any of those things as stopping points as they're moving back to spawn. So again, just to drive this point home, to recap real quick, the spotted bass are going to use the main river channels as highways to move for their spawn migration. And anywhere or any irregularity in that will be a stopping point for these fish. So as I mentioned, some of them will spawn on humps. So some of them will only make it from this main river up to this hump, and then they'll stay there throughout the summertime. So they will not even make it even halfway back in this creek. So that's why you have to check some of this deeper stuff and deeper brush to see if there are any spotted bass again out there some of my best places that i've caught fish i'll actually show you guys something that i'm looking for our saddles so if we jump over here you guys can see there's a little island out here and a saddle is kind of like exactly like you would think about on a, a horse's saddle it's rounded in between two points it's just like the saddle on a horse right here we have an island and we have another the mainland and in between it we have this saddle of hard spot or ground. It looks like with a roadbed too. You guys can see here with this purple roadbed that runs over this way. But that's gonna be clay. That's gonna be a hard spot. Generally guys, these points and humps, anything that was not carved out by the river is going to be rock, clay. It's gonna be harder bottom. It's going to be things that the spotted bass will use to spawn on because the river hasn't eroded it away as quickly, you know, as softer soil. So again, what this tells me here, this is a saddle. This would be a perfect example of somewhere to fish, as I mentioned, for spotted bass staging and spawning. So these fish might come in from the main river channel. Let's, let's shift over here. They might come in, they might be living in this ditch. Golly guys, they might've, they might've hung out here all winter long, right here in this ditch. And now when they go to move, they're going to pull up on this hump, they're going to pull up on this roadbed, and they're going to pull up on this saddle right here. That's all they're going to go. They're not going to come around here and, you know, some of them are not, or most of them are not going to move all the way around here, go all the way back to the back of this creek to spawn. Spotted bass don't care. They'll spawn out on the main lake. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys is they will literally spawn anywhere. That's why you have to keep such an open mind and try so many different things. So that's an example of an irregular, I guess an irregular thought process on where fish are going to go to spawn, especially spotted bass. However, as I mentioned, some of them will make their waves back through these creeks. And again, you can hit those points that I already talked about to intercept those fish on their way back to, again, shallower water. Because some of them will move back, you know, and, and move on some of these secondary points and edges and stuff like that to spawn. But if I can't drill this point home enough, guys, if you guys aren't listening to anything else, listen to this. Spotted bass will not do what you think they're going to do twice in a row or two days in a row. So they will pull off, like I said, just to drive this home again on this roadbed, on this hump. They will not go all the way to the back like you're traditionally thinking like a largemouth would. And I know some of those largemouth don't either, but spots just behave differently and they're tougher to pattern. So if you guys are liking this video so far, go ahead, drop a like down below and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. 
Now, let's jump into or briefly again go over good places to fish, good structures to fish. I mentioned docks. Docks are a great place to start because again, those fish are moving and again, most of the time guys, if you fish enough docks, you're going to find some fish. They're good, you know, stopping points of especially docks with irregularities. Uh, maybe a green light at night where the fish will hang out and will be there in the morning. Uh, maybe brush, maybe people, you know, hung Christmas trees. Uh, what else could there be? There could be, again, the docks that are under river channels, stuff like that. Any irregularities, it could be the first dock in a cove. Those are the docks you're looking for to fish, and those are the ones that are going to hold fish, again, as stopping points. Those fish are going to use that as cover and structure to feed up before. Number two place I would fish would be brush piles. Brush piles are a great stopping point, again, as I mentioned, on these humps and points that are pretty big. I mean, there's some long long points there's some huge humps that just cover a large area it'd be very tough to fish look for those brush piles or you know rock piles anything different on that point or hump that's where the fish are going to be that's where the spotted bass are going to stage up feeding on crawfish feeding on shad feeding on herring you name it again any irregularity that's what you're looking for so those are be kind of two places that i would look to fish during the pre-spawn now, let's talk about when these fish begin this move. Guys, I caught a fish in February that I believe was already on a bed. It was in 18 feet of water. I had forward-facing sonar looking at it. It was on a hard spot in 18 feet. There were two fish paired up, one small, one large. And I flipped a, a worm at these fish, six or seven casts, and they would swim around and come right back to the same spot. And eventually, I think it was like the seventh or eighth cast, the bigger one nosed up on the bait and went ahead and ate and I caught it. I truly believe that these fish already, at least a wave of them or a small, a small percentage of them start to spawn in February. And honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised, you know, if freak incidents, they spawned in January. But for the most part, this process starts in February. So... This will go, again, I mentioned throw everything you think you know about spotted bass out the window. This will go all the way through May. There will still be fish spawning in May. I kid you not. This is the longest process. They're not like largemouth. I'm telling you, it's not two or three waves. These fish will do whatever they want, hands down. So, again, it's crazy. It's tough to pattern, and again, it changes day to day. So you have to be willing to adapt. But... February to May will be the time frame from when these fish will begin to spawn with March and April obviously being the most prosperous or most prevalent spawning of, uh, of the spotted bass. So that's the best time of year. Now let's jump into a bunch of conditions and how this affects spotted bass in their transition. So let's again, just because I'm already on this and for sake of teaching here, Let's pretend that back in this creek, uh, there's some docks. I mean, I know there's some docks back here, but let's pretend that the fish are, you know, in the middle of pre-spawn, which they are, you guys are getting that, and they're posted up on this point, and let's say there's some docks over here, and they're under these docks. So mo let's say, let's again, this is theory here, let's say most of these fish are gonna be right here in this mouth at this point in their transition. So you've you fished all this stuff, they really haven't been there, and then boom, you start catching fish here, you work your way to the back, don't catch anything there. You know these fish in this creek are in this area. So now we know that. Let's pretend we know that there's fish in that area of the creek. How different conditions affect spotted bass? Let's start off with sunny versus cloudy. Sunny is going to, in my opinion, in my experience, again, fishing the lake for over 15 years, sun is going to position the spotted bass in the cover or structure better. They're going to be tighter to the cover. They're going to be under the cover. So for docks, they're going to be under the middle of the dock rather than on the edge. In the brush piles, they're going to be directly in the brush piles rather than roaming around for the most part. For Again, rock piles, they're gonna be 
right up on that rock in shallow water. They're gonna be way up there and probably glued to the bottom. It's gonna take a very keen eye to see those fish, even with forward facing sonar. When it's cloudy, what it's gonna do is allow those fish to roam around more and scatter more. What that means, if they were under a dock and you knew they were here, they're gonna start roaming a little bit. So they might be on the edges of the docks. They might be in between the docks. They might be out in front of the docks. They could be anywhere, that's my point. They're not going to stay under that structure where you knew they were as well when it's cloudy. Same thing with a brush pile. They may, if there's, you know, let's say there's a group of 10 fish in a brush pile. If it goes from sunny to cloudy, those 10 fish, if nine of them were in the brush before, when it gets cloudy, you might have five in the brush and five roaming around. They're not gonna be as tightly clumped. That's what I've personally seen. So that's sunny versus cloudy, something to keep in mind. Again, you guys are getting some great information here, so I'm spilling, I'm spilling a lot. So if you could go ahead, again, like this video, subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it with sharing sharing all this information with you guys. Again, I'm trying to help you guys get better because Lanier is such a tough lake. It can be very frustrating, but it can also be so rewarding. And again, in my opinion, it is the number one spotted bass lake in the country. So if you guys could go ahead and do that for me, that'd be great. Now let's talk about fronts, weather fronts, warm front versus cold front. So a warming trend is going to push the fish, and I'll show you guys this, it's going to push the fish, if they, let's say they're here, let's, again, they're here again, a warming trend is going to push those fish shallower and more towards the back. So if these fish are here, they're gonna start moving further back and they're gonna start moving further up or shallower. When I say up, I mean shallower. That's what a warming trend is going to do. And that's why these spotted bass Guys, like I'm saying, look for deeper water because these fish, because the conditions change so often, because these fish change so often, they love to have deeper water nearby. And so that's your best chance of staying around fish is again, fishing areas where the, the fish have access to deeper water for most of the day, even during the pre-spawn. That's a key there, even during the pre-spawn they're not gonna move super far away from deeper water. Now, again, with a cooling trend, those fish, let's say they're here, they're gonna pull out off the bank and further back this way. So again, they want to go to deeper water. I don't know exactly why that is, guys, but on a cooling trend, I don't know if it's a pressure thing. I don't know why, but generally on a cooling trend, and it depends on how far you're into it and, and all that. Like I said, you gotta change a lot. It's hour to hour. It literally is hour to hour. But generally on a cooling trend, what it's gonna do to those fish, if they're here, they're gonna pull to deeper water out and they're gonna pull back a little bit. So those fish, when they're moving into spawn, they're not gonna leave. So when you get a pre, you know, when you get a cold front that comes through and you can't catch fish, I mean, hands down, and you think they just disappeared altogether. These fish are not gonna swim all the way back out to their winter locations. They're not. They may move, like I said, a step back. So like they may, if they were here under docks, they may move out to this deeper point where they have access to deep water and suspend out over deeper water. They're just gonna move backwards and deeper. They may, they may be here guys and just move out to deeper water. They just may move out to the middle of this ditch but that's what they're going to do with a cold front. And again, if we get a warm front, what they're gonna do is they're gonna start moving again. They're gonna pull forward back into this ditch and up shallower, again, under the docks, between the docks, stuff like that. So that's cold front versus warm front. Now, moon phase, my personal opinion on this, I don't think it matters a whole lot with spotted bass in particular. People say, you know, the full moon, it draws them in. Guys, I've had some of my best, you know, spawning days for spotted bass, I should say, when they're pulled up on those saddles and clay points and everything like that in the middle of moon phases. I don't think it affects those spots as much. That's my opinion. 
people could prove me wrong. I mean, drop a comment down below if you think I'm totally wrong. I'd love to learn. I'm, I'm in, in this with you guys. Like, I'm always down to learn something new. I always want to get better. Again, my whole goal is to get better every single day. That's just something I live by. And that's why I'm doing this for you guys is hopefully to help you guys get better at the pre-spawn for spotted bass. So my opinion there, don't worry about moon phase. I don't think it's the biggest deal. Someone might have it dialed to a T. And if you do, like I said, drop a comment down below and share it with me. That'd be great. I'd really appreciate that. But I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. I really don't think you need to worry about that. The first two things that I talked about, both temperature and uh, when I say cold front, warm front, that is going to affect the water temperature. And that's, I think, the biggest factor. So that's what you need to watch is when that water temp drops a degree or two, that means it's a cooling trend. When that water starts to jump up a degree or two or three, that's a warming trend. So that water temperature is mostly related when I say to cold front, warm front. That's kind of what I'm talking about there. But between that and suns and clouds, I think those are kind of the two biggest factors to keep in mind uh, when pre-spawn fishing. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Now, before you go, I know a few of you are questioning right now about what lures you should throw. I've recently done a video on the top five or my top five pre-spawn baits that apply to spotted bass in particular. And if you guys want to watch that, I'll post that right here and you guys can go see what my top five pre-spawn lures are to catch these pre-spawn spotted bass in the areas and locations that I just shared with you in this video. Hopefully all of that information helped you guys out a bunch on understanding where the spotted bass are moving to and what they're going to do during the pre-spawn. Again, guys, they do crazy things. Spotted bass have done wild things. I'm sure some of these fish, you know, spawn out and, you know, who knows, even deeper out over the timber. Who knows? I mean, it's crazy on what these fish will do. But these spotted bass do crazy things, and that's why I can't emphasize enough that you guys keep, need to keep an open mind and make sure if, if something's not working, if you're not catching fish, change it up the next hour. If you're not catching fish again, change it up again. Change lure, change location. Try a different type of structure or area that I just showed you guys here. You know, either back up or you know, move forward in that progression. Me personally, I always like to go, I like to go forward, so to the spawn, because I know they're going there, and then work backwards. That's kind of my strategy. So it just it makes me confident to know that I will eventually intercept them on their way, you know, because they're coming to me. If I work my way out, they're coming to me. And that again, mentally for me is just how I break down quite honestly, a lot, most any lake that we go and fish. But keep an open mind, try a bunch of different things. It's going to be very difficult. You're not gonna be perfect. I Guys, I still have days where I go out and don't catch a bunch of fish, hands down. But the pre-spawn is a great time to catch a giant. I've recently been hooking, oh my goodness, so many four and five pound class fish. And you guys have seen some of those so far. I've got a bunch more videos of, you know, with all that coming down the line. but. I am successful and my experience on the water for all of those years has allowed me again to share this information with you guys for what works for me.